My name's Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel. Today, I wanna to walk you through some of the basics of Apple HomeKit and how to get started with some initial products and setting up some automations. So what is HomeKit even to begin with? You probably heard the term thrown around and then you have this app called the Home app on your iPhone. Well, the Home app is an app you can use to control HomeKit compatible products. So you might buy some kind of a smart home, uh, you know, smart light bulb or thermostat or something else at the store and see that it has a badge on it that says works with Apple HomeKit. And that means that you can connect it to HomeKit in your home and then use Apple's Home app to control that and then set up any kind of automations or configurations from there. And it also means when it works with HomeKit that you can talk to Siri uh, and the, whether that's on a HomePod or one of your other Apple devices, and then that Siri can then talk to those devices in your home. You can also talk to Siri to trigger what are called Siri shortcuts, and that is a totally different topic that we'll cover in some other video. And so we've talked about that HomeKit is this platform where you can talk to all these different products with Apple's Home app, but what is actually your home? You have to set up a home inside of the Home app. Well, a home is really any place where you have control over the Wi-Fi internet connection, but it doesn't need to be a place necessarily that you own, and it doesn't necessarily need to be a single family home. It could be a townhouse, an apartment, uh, you know, any number of different living situations. And keep in mind that you can create multiple homes within the home app. So maybe you have a vacation home that you want to also control. You can totally set that up in the home app as well. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves right now. So the last term I want to clarify is what is an accessory? You might have heard me or other people talk about, oh, this new accessory for HomeKit. Well, an accessory is just this product that works with HomeKit is really all it is. And I guess the thinking is that your home is also a smart product now when it's powered by something like Apple HomeKit. And so then you can go and buy these products that are really just accessories for the main thing, which is your home. I just unboxed this Eve Energy smart plug here. Now, they sent me this smart plug, but I really recommend smart plugs as a great way to get started into home automation. They're very simple. You just plug one end into an outlet and then the other end into something you wanna control with the smart plug. And then the smart plug can turn the power to that uh, whatever device on and off. So you could do this with a lamp, you could do this with things like uh, air purifiers, space heaters, fans, the list goes on and on of the different things that you could control with a smart plug. And I like to look for things that I call smart plug compatible. That means that like my noise machine that I use for white noise at night, it will resume the last setting when the power cuts onto it. So you turn on the smart plug and boom, you have that thing working as you want. The same thing goes for the air purifier in my office where I cut that on and then it will just start working uh, with the fan moving at the particular speed that I have it set to. So now I'm here in the home app and I'm gonna tap add accessory and then you'll see that the camera comes up and I'm gonna go ahead and scan that QR code. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that this plug has some power so that the uh, phone can actually talk to the smart plug. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the uh, Eve Energy here. Now I'm just using an extension cord for the purposes of a demo. Uh, you probably wanna do this in your outlet. And there's a code right here on the side, so I'm gonna go ahead and scan this code. So now it sees that it has an outlet. I can go ahead and choose Add to Home, and it's gonna go ahead and connect to this outlet. Okay, great. And now what you'll see is it needs to have an outlet location. So if you think about it, 
your home has rooms and every product that you add to your smart home exists in a particular room in your house. And this helps you remember where things are both for automations, when you're telling Siri to do something with a certain device, you know, it's, oh, the one in the bedroom or the one in the living room. Uh, so you can come up with any names for any rooms you want. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna say it's in the kitchen. This is a, suge a suggested room. And so I hit go or continue and that's gonna create the room for us in our home called the kitchen. And then it gives it just this product name, but I could call it, uh, let's say I wanna call this my fan. So I hit continue. Then I'm gonna say that this is actually a fan as a type of accessory. So that way Siri and other things know, oh, we're actually talking about a fan here. We're not talking about, you know, some kind of a lamp or some other accessory. And then that will help as you talk to Siri about this, it'll understand what you're talking about. So you hit continue and we don't need to worry about automations right now. Hit continue again and then hit done and you've added this to your home. So now it just jumped me over to my main home with all my accessories. But here you can see that we have this uh, kitchen fan accessory. All right, and now thanks to the magic of television, we have a box fan sitting right behind us that I can connect to my trusty new smart plug. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the fan to the smart plug and you'll notice that nothing happens. And that's because if we look here in the home app, our kitchen fan is turned off. But then if I just simply tap that accessory in the home app, you'll notice that it doesn't turn on. That's because I don't have the setting turned on here. So if you notice, you know, there's a hardware switch on the back of the fan itself that I just had to switch to make sure that the fan would actually power on when it's plugged in automatically. So keep in mind that whatever you're plugging in needs to be, you know, if it's a lamp, it needs to be turned on. If it's a fan, it needs to be turned on and ready to go when you go ahead and trigger the power from the smart plug. Now, this is great and all until we want to run an automation that happens when we're not actually home. Let's say you want to cool down your kitchen in the afternoon before you get home from the office or whatever, and so you can have the fan run on a schedule. Well, if you're out away from the home, uh, what's happening basically right now as we demo this is that my phone is talking via HomeKit directly to this smart plug. And you see, that's the, one of the main differences of Apple HomeKit versus Amazon and Google. Most of the time it's not going out to some cloud service for the company that made the device and then talking back to your home where a lot of things in the other smart home ecosystems are way more based in the cloud. Now in order to communicate with this device when we're not home, we need something that Apple calls a HomeKit Hub. Now, a HomeKit Hub is a number of different products that Apple makes, including HomePods, Apple TVs, uh, also dedicated iPads. I don't really recommend starting out with that uh, particular use case. What I would say is go ahead and get a HomePod Mini. They're $99 US and uh, you know they work as a speaker and a great voice assistant for Siri and that'll give you an always on connection to your devices. Now we're gonna go ahead and set up a HomePod and without actually doing or configuring anything extra, it will just become the HomeKit hub in our home and then we can trigger any of these HomeKit devices while we're away from home. Great. Hi, I'm Siri. Welcome to HomePod. Thanks. You can't tell, but I'm waving. To get my attention, Hi. say, hey, Siri. Let's hey. get started. Say, hey, Siri, what can you do? I don't need to do that. So if you'll see here, the HomePod has been added to our home. So one of the details in the home app, if you want to control the specific settings for a particular accessory is you long press on it and then it will open up this new view here where you can control obviously whether your fan is on or off. So we can still do that. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off here and go down here to the uh, you know details and settings. So I just scroll down and then I can choose what room it is, whether I want, in this case, because it's a smart plug, I can say display as a fan. And then from there, I can choose to add it to scenes. Now, scenes are any number of different accessories controlled at once to reach a particular state. So maybe in this case, it's showing, you know, you can have an automation with a scene where when you leave home, it turns off the fan. Uh, maybe when you go good night, you want the fan to turn off or turn on. So, or you could have a good morning scene, a dinner time scene, the list goes on and on. And you can see how, as you have more accessories, more smart plugs, smart lighting, smart everything, that then all of that can just work together in a scene. And that's one of the easiest payoffs of smart home tech is starting to get these coordinated scenes that just create the environment that you want in your home for whether it's movie night, working on a project for, for work, or, you know, doing any kind of, you know, activities in your home. You can set the lighting just right, put on the music you want, uh, you know, get any other, the temperature of the room just right. And all of that can just happen at the touch of a button or by asking Siri to do that or to set that particular scene. And I've talked more in other videos about all different ways I use scenes to automate my home and stuff. Uh, but that's just something to consider. So you can, uh, of course, add scenes back here on the main screen by hitting add scene and then give it a name and, and choose what you want to control. Now, I want to just quickly go over the tabs at the bottom of the screen because I think this is another great way to understand what to, what, what is going on. So here, in the main home tab is where you see your favorite accessories. So as you add more accessories, you can have certain ones be favorites, and this will give you a quick overview of the important things in your home. Um, so if I go over to my home, you can see that this is a quick overview of, um, you know, my security system is off right now because I'm home, my garage door is open because my wife's doing other stuff. Uh, around the house and you know you can see different lights that are on and then I can scroll down and see the status of different cameras in my home so it's just a quick dashboard to see a broad status across all the rooms if I go to a particular room in the next tab over, then you can see all the accessories that are in that room. So again, you can see how in my own home, outside of this little demo, I've added lots of different accessories uh, you know, in different rooms and have different scenes related to that. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to talk about the automation tab. Now to do that, I'm going to go back to sort of our demo home for this lesson. And so we go to the automation tab and you'll see we don't have any automations yet. And I'm going to create a new automation. And one of the really useful ones that I think you want to get started with is when a time of day occurs. So you could say, let's say back to my use case earlier, we want the fans to go on in the afternoon to cool down the kitchen. So let's say at a time of day, we're going to say uh, 3 p.m. on any day of the week, or maybe you just want it to be on the weekdays then uh, you know you can also set details of only do this when I am home or when I'm not home. So let's say only on weekdays when I'm not home at 3 p.m. we want to turn on the fan. So uh, then you know we're gonna just check the fan, hit next, and the fan we want to turn on at 3 p.m. on weekdays only when we're not home. And so you can see how now that we have a home hub with the HomePod Mini to control the home when we're not home, and we have one smart plug, which you know we're in about 150 US dollars here for this Eve Energy and the HomePod Mini. And so for just that amount of money, we've added, you know, plus the cost of a box fan or whatever other thing you might already have, we've added a whole lot of intelligence to one product. And you can see how when you start to compound this of, oh, I get multiple smart lights and multiple smart plugs and other things, I do want to highlight one other tab here, which is the Discover tab. And you know, sometimes these kind of stock tabs can be kind of cheesy, but 
I looked through this the other day and I really do think Apple's done a great job here of putting together some great guides of different categories of smart home tech and different ideas here of what you might want to do um, and even then you know linking into some more details on particular ones where you can you know go to the Apple store and buy particular products so uh, I really do recommend checking out these guides as you're browsing through the home app um, also check out other videos on this channel and you know I have a guide on my website that has all kinds of products that I use and love that work with Apple HomeKit uh, so that's li linked in the description and there should be another video on the screen that tells you more about using scenes and other uh, ways I automate my home with Apple HomeKit so you can start to see how these things build on each other. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.